For a couple of videos, we'll be talking about latches and timing and latches and pipelines involving latches. So here we see an active high latch implemented using uh, multiplexes. And we see the uh, diagram, uh, the waveform showing the behavior of an active high and an active low latch. Latches are elements that we have generally ignored. We have only been looking at registers, CMOS registers, in terms of uh, how they can be used to pipeline uh, combination of CMOS to create a path that can help us determine the timing in a circuit. Uh, latches were only used as building blocks for registers, where we used two latches of the opposite sense to create a register. However, in this video and the upcoming video, we will be talking about how latches can be used to create pipelines of their own and why these pipelines are sometimes um, really good and helpful and why they are sometimes really challenging and should be used very carefully. Um, to be able to look at the pipeline using latches, we have to uh, revise how latch uh, behaves. So latches are transparent uh, at a level of the clock rather than at an edge. So uh, an active high latch will be transparent whenever the clock is high. An active low latch will be transparent whenever the clock is low. And it will be opaque in the opposite phase of the clock. This is how a latch can be implemented in CMOS. Uh, this is basically a multiplexer where the two uh, transmission gates are doing the uh, multiplexing action. And uh, the inverters are just providing either feedback uh, storage or drive. So uh, inverters I2 and I3 are providing positive feedback in this case, while inverter I1 and inverter I2 provide drive for the output Q. So when the clock is high in this latch, transmission gate T1 is active and Q is equal to D. When the clock is low, transmission gate T1 is off and transmission gate T2 is on, allowing this positive feedback pair formed by I2 and I3 to preserve the last stored value. So obviously we do not have any uh, edge triggered action here. We have level sensitive action. One thing we did not do when we looked at latches was consider their timing. So uh, in registers, we, uh, we found out that timing involved three basic quantities, setup time, hold time, and TCQ, uh, which are always relationships between the clock and one of either the input or the output. Uh, the timing in latches is actually pretty similar, but uh, there are fundamental differences that we have to understand. So a latch also has a setup time, a hold time, and something called TDQ instead of TCQ. So for an active high latch, setup time and hold time are defined around the falling edge of the clock. So this is an act active high latch and thus we look at the falling edge of the clock and setup time is defined a as a relationship between this falling edge and the input changing before the edge. Hold time is defined as a relationship in time between this falling edge of the clock and again the data changing but after the falling edge. Because um, we define setup and hold time on the negative edge of the clock for a active high latch uh, and we define them for the rising edge of the clock in a positive edge triggered register, this terminology can sometimes be a little bit confusing. So um, sometimes we use uh, the uh, terms recovery time for setup time and removal time for hold time when we talk about latches instead. In fact, the terms recovery and removal times are more expressive of, of what's happening here. So what's happening here? What's happening is that this is an active high latch and therefore it should be transparent to any changes in the input during the positive uh, phase of the clock. But if the data, if D changes too close to the, uh, to the edge of the clock, then there's a chance that this would not be registered or actually this would not be latched is a better way of saying it. So can data D change exactly at the falling edge? No, because we don't know actually at the falling edge whether the clock is high or low and the latch is transparent in the high phase. And so there has to be some safety margin before the falling edge of the clock that we can safely change the, the, the data at. So the data can change anytime 
at or before setup time before the clock becomes zero. All the changes that happen before T setup will be reflected on Q. So that's the difference between a latch and a register. If D keeps changing within the active phase of the clock, all these changes will be trans uh, transferred to Q. But any change that happens more than T setup before the edge of the clock will not be latched properly. So why is that the case? Well, we have to go back to the uh, diagram here and think about what happens when, uh, when the uh, edge of the clock falls. So when the clock goes from high to low, transmission gate T1 will close. And so we want to give some time before the transmission gate T1 closes for data to be latched properly within, uh, within this latch. So how much time is that? We should give enough time for data to pass through inverter one and to pass through transmission gate T1. And therefore, the setup time for the latch is equal to T inverter one plus T uh, transmission gate one. If you go back and look at registers, you will find that this is actually the same as setup time in a register. So the quantity, the amount of time is actually the same, although the sense of what setup time represents is a little bit different. In this case, we have to give enough time for data to propagate through the latch. Multiple changes within the active phase of the clock can actually propagate through the latch. But the last one of them should be at least the setup before the falling edge of the clock. Of course, if we are talking about a uh, active low latch, we'll be talking about the rising edge of the clock instead. So what's hold time or removal time? Again, when you uh, lower the clock, there will be a zero zero overlap in the clock. So this is exactly the same as the situation in a register. So uh, if clock falls, clock bar will be delayed a little bit as it rises. And therefore, there will be a period where the two clocks will be zero. And we will call this T00 overlap. And so during the overlap time, transmission gate T1 fails to, cl to close because transmission gate T1 will still be conducting through its PMOS. It will close once clock bar goes high. And therefore, to prevent any data that changes after the active edge of the clock from being latched, we have to hold the data at D for a time equal to T00 over overlap. So when the clock goes low, the latch is supposed to be opaque. But for a time equal to T00 overlap, the, the latch is still allowing data to uh, seep through uh, transmission gate T1. How long? T00 overlap, after which the PMOS of T transmission gate 1 will, uh, will actually close. And so the safest thing to do is to hold the data D stable for this amount of time and then to let it go, which is defined as a hold time. Again, it's also sometimes called removal time in latches because it is the amount of time after the, uh, the clock goes inactive that it is safe after to remove the data from D. Now, there's something similar to TCQ here, uh, which is the time it takes for Q to appear on the output of the latch. But it's not actually a relationship between the clock and Q, because in a register, when the active edge, edge of a clock came, after the active edge of a clock, it would take some time for Q to show up. And so we call this amount of time TCQ, T clock to Q. Here, Q will change multiple times within the uh, active phase of the clock. And therefore, it's not actually a relationship between the clock and uh, and the Q, and Q, it's actually a relationship between D and Q, and therefore we, therefore we call it TDQ. And so, if we go back to the uh, latch schematic and look at the amount of time it takes between D changing and Q changing, then D will travel through I1, travel through T2, and travel through I2. And so, if Q is taken here at the output of I2, then TDQ will be equal to TI1 plus T transmission gate one plus TI2.